Hey guys, uh, today we're going to do a question uh, involving probability with uh, multiple outcomes. Uh, we have a test containing three multiple choice questions and we need to calculate the probability of getting one correct, at least one correct, and no more than one wrong if each question has three options. I've saved us a bit of time and I've drawn the tree diagram over here already. Each question we can get correct incorrect or incorrect before moving on to the next question with the same possible outcomes. If we have three questions, we need three layers to our tree diagram, each consisting of these three options. Over here on the side, I've listed all of the possible outcomes for these various events. This makes these questions rather straightforward because then working out the probability of each of these is as straightforward as counting which of these outcomes over here fit each of these different possibilities. So for the first question, we need to calculate the probability of getting one correct. Now the probability of any event is equal to the number of outcomes that fit our event over the total number of outcomes. So if we move over here to our different outcomes, we should just be able to count how many have just one tick. None of these are suitable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12 over, well, we have three groups of 9 here, so the total number of outcomes will be 27. Moving on to the next question, we now need to find if we have at least one correct. This is the sort of wording that you need to be very careful of in these questions. At least means that I have to have, at a bare minimum, one tick. So we can now count all of our outcomes over here that have at least one tick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So the probability of getting at least one tick is equal to 19 over 27. Question C we need no more than one wrong. So we're allowed at least one incorrect, but any more than that and we will fail the questions. So over here, this is fine because it doesn't have more than one wrong. It doesn't have any wrongs, but that doesn't matter. So this is suitable. These are suitable because they only have one wrong. So we have one, two, three, four. This is no good because it has two incorrects, so we ignore it. So four, five, same for these, we skip those, six, seven, and that's all. So the probability of no more then one wrong is equal to seven over 27. And that's why I really like drawing tree diagrams for these questions, because as long as you can construct the tree diagram properly, according to the question, the rest of it's just counting.